specificity of the genome, meaning that the genome has to be transcribed and interpreted in terms of epigenetic, epigenetic factors. I will quote uh, uh, geneticist Thomas Genuvine from Vienna, from the Max Planck Institute, uh, which proposes this definition of epigenetics. It is a metaphor, I think it's very uh, uh, expressive. He says, quote, the difference between genetics and epigenetics can probably be compared to the difference between writing and reading a book. Once a book is written, the text, that is here the genes or DNA stored information, will be the same in all the copies distributed to the interested audience. So the text is the same. However, each individual reader of a given book may interpret the story slightly differently with varying emotions and projections as they continue to unfold the chapters. In a very similar manner, epigenetics would allow different interpretations of a fixed template and result in different readouts dependent upon the variable conditions under which this template is interrogated. So the code is the book and the epigenetic factors uh, are the readers, the interpreters. In a very important book uh, by Eva Jablonska, Evolution in Four Dimensions, which is uh, the most interesting book, uh, I think, uh, which came out recently on current biology. The two authors, I forgot the author's name, Jablonska Mary and, Lamb. Yeah, and Lamb, compare uh, the genetic code for, for their part to uh, the, the, the score and epigenetic factors as interpretation. So this is a music, musical a metaphor which is used this time. Well, to conclude, I will go back to the first part. Epigenetics is interesting as a science because it shows that through a process of translation, which is totally imminent to the biological, uh, we find, we find something like a symbolic process, interpretation, translation, transcription, all the metaphors that are uh, used by scientists to describe what epigenetics does, uh, all refer to a kind of symbolic activity. So that would be a symbolic activity within our biological structure, which would be very similar to what Levi Strauss describes. Because if we are not predetermined, it means that the way in which our phenotype is fashioned for its plasticity always implies something like a blank space, a floating signifier, which is our personal singularity and style. In a way, epigenetics inscribe the blank, inscribe the void within, uh, the sovereignty of the, of the genetic code. So in a way, with epigenetics, we find something like a struggle between the sovereignty of genetics and the uh, symbolic, well, uh, the, the, the symbolic economy understood as what proceeds from the floating signifier with the epigenetic factors. But the difference between these struggle and the split I was talking about a moment ago is that this time this happened at the level of biology itself and that philosophy and that this logic of the sacrifice or this more than disappears entirely. We don't have to presuppose something like a transcendental or external or outside messianic structure of the oh, life is always more than itself. It offers itself to its own reduction. You don't have to think of such a thing because the symbolic production happens at the biological level. If we can describe something as a plasticity of life, something like a biological supplement of indeterminacy, 
something like the coexistence of determinism and freedom within the biological frame, then we can affirm that life is never more than itself, that life is always what it can be, and that biology is not and never, <laughs> and I'm very passionate about that, is not uh, depending upon a transcendent symbolic economy. What is fascinating, according to me, in current biology is that we see that biological life is creating and producing its own symbolization. And the problem is that the way in which we interpret ourselves biologically, the way in which uh, we are both the book and the reader of ourselves, because this is what, what it is, uh, the genetic epigenetic interaction. If we're both uh, the book and the reader, it means that there's something in us which is ungraspable by the sovereign power. It means that this freedom of interpretation, this uniqueness of our own reading of ourselves, I mean, biological reading of ourselves, is ungraspable by sovereignty. And in this, in that sense, epigenetics uh, provide us, provides us with a very strong notion of resistance. Current biology is the site then where, very surprisingly, occurs the gradual and definitive demise uh, and disappearance of the notion of program, of pre-programming, of determinism. I, um, I imagine that you're familiar with these notions that, we, that now are very usual in current biology of uh, mm, deprogramming, reprogramming, uh, de-differentiation, re-differentiation, all that we can do, all that scientists can do now uh, with well, playing with these epigenetic factors. Um, I was thinking of developing a neural plasticity, but this is something we can go back to uh, uh, in the discussion. Now, of course, to conclude, because I'm going just to conclude and then open, well, listen to your questions. Um, of course, you, 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 you may ask, so what? What do you want to do with this uh, internal, when I say internal, this is not, internal is not the right word, uh, with this um, mm, biological process of symbolization? What does it change? in philosophy to say that uh, the symbolic cannot be something, can definitely not be something external to biology anymore. That we have to think of the end of the transcendence of the symbolic or, or uh, the transcendence of the symbolic vis-a-vis -vis the biological. So what? I think, And this is uh, what I will have to, to work about. I think it changes tremendously um, our way of um, understanding what the symbolic is. Uh, that it erases the frontier between, well, between the supplement and the material component of our being. The supplement is itself a production, is itself a biological production. So at the moment, I'm working on that. I'm trying to understand what, ha what, what happens exactly and uh, how we philosophers can go on thinking without uh, our usual conceptual tools, which in a way or another, we're always linked with this distinction between the symbolic and the biological. So what is happening to philosophy now? One of my students, and this is my conclusion, one of my students in medicine where I taught in February wrote a paper uh, about what she called, and I like the expression very much, the epigenetic turn. I like this expression because it's referred to Heidelberg's notion of the turn epigenetic turn meaning something like a historical change. 
this change induced by the epigenetic turn is also, as I tried to show, a political, a political change, which allows us to, to open a different perspective on, of course, biology itself, but mostly on the relationship between biology and sovereignty. Biology ceases to be this transparent surface de projection of power relationships. If a major part of our individuality is biologically shaped and not pre-programmed, it means that this part of us is not politically symbolizable, that it is impossible to constitute it as an effect with a meaning, as Foucault used to say about sex and love. The non-symbolizable part of us, I mean the non-politically symbolizable part of us, resists, is what resists biopolitics. And I think that all the laws that uh, ban cloning, uh, epigenetic manipulations, are in fact reactive laws, are in fact reactive positions against the discovery of this uh, biological freedom. I, I would call it that way. I don't believe at all in the ethical value of these laws. I think that the, the real reason uh, for this law to exist, you know, in France recently, a research of, on embryos were uh, forbidden. Again, you know, scientists were hoping that this time um, research on stem cell would be allowed, but no, we're coming back to the previous state of things. We're not allowed to worry. On embryonic cells, and I think that all these laws have no ethical value. They are in fact laws against. They don't want us to, to, to be conscious of this epigenetic potential that we have. And that is why epigenetics, even as a science, is still waiting for universal consensus. You still have scientists which, who reduce the part plays played by epigenetics. Um, so, if we um, accept to acknowledge such a potential, political potential of epigenetics, we um, have to see how this potential is what creates its own symbolic economy within life itself. So what would such symbolic economy be? And that would be my last word. Well. If epigenetics work inside the biological structure, it means that there's no outside of it. It means that there's no sacrificial structure. It means then that we have to think about desacralization of life. Uh, life has no sacred value anymore because there's nothing outside of it. So the book we should think of writing now would be, well, I mean, I think the right title would be Desacralized Homo. Thank you.